Hello guys and welcome to the new tutorial from the uh, SketchUp Orca Studio. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about how we can make realistic rendering, exterior rendering in Enscape 4.7 for SketchUp. So this is the 3D model, which you can see very simple with some very simple and minimal details which related to the exterior design. So in this case, I'm going to use Enscape. Actually, the rendering quality of the Enscape may be not equal with the D5, Lumion or some other type of rendering engines, but Enscape have their own fans and I think Enscape can be really flexible in different type of projects, especially in the architecture projects. So in this case, we're going to test it out on the exterior rendering and I hope this tutorial helps you to make your rendering skill much better. So. I'm going to click on the uh, start Enscape in here. This is the 3D model that we generated in SketchUp and you can see the details and materials in Enscape very simple and easy. So first of all, for the rendering, you need safe frame. What is the safe frame? When I click on the F on my keyboard, I have scene number one, which you can find it out. This is the Enscape environment. I can orbit. And if I click on the scene number one, I will turn back to the scene number one in my design. First of all, we need safe frame. Right now, I can render this image, but I prefer to not render it because when you turn on the safe frame, now you have your own camera lens, which you can test it out in different type of aspects. I'm going to click on the create view in here and generate new camera for myself. I'm going to type camera 001 and the pitch is about eight, which sets your angle for your project. The X is about 19.1. It totally depends on how you want to use these numbers, but the Y is really important because Y is the eye height in here. For example, the standard eye height for the architecture rendering is 1.6. So when you type 1.6, the camera goes down. So I'm going to type 1.2 in here. The Z is about 8.6. And the Y is about the rotation and orientation of your camera. I'm going to type 42 degree in here. I can see camera goes to left. Or if I type 39, the camera will be go to right. I need the model in the center of my camera. So I think I should reduce the Y option in here. And 36 can be wonderful. Or 35. You have some position at the left side bottom. If I turn off the save and escape some position, this camera view will be totally safe for me without sun data. But I need the sun angle and data. So I'm going to click on the save and escape some position. And we have azimuth and altitude. So in this case, I'm going to play with the azimuth, which you can see what happened. I need these shadows to show my work quality. So in this case, I'm going to move the azimuth some number like that. It's the solar angle, which means that where is the sun position? But the altitude is the daytime. For example, in here, we have sunrise. And when I increase it, we will have night. So it totally depends on you how you want to use this architectural element for your project. I prefer to use something near to the sunset because it makes my render more realistic. So I'm going to type 8 degree for the uh, altitude and 100 for the azimuth. So when I click on the create option, camera number one will be create for me and it's done. So I'm going to close it. I'm going to minimize Enscape at the right side, SketchUp in the left side. And now I want to work with materials. As you can see, if I zoom a little bit in Enscape, I can see this grass is real, this grass is real. But in here, the grass is only a texture. So how I can change it to the real grass? I'm going to click on the uh, Enscape Material Editor. And I'm going to click on the Paint Bucket, Sample Paint. Pick this texture for myself. The type of it is the generic. I want to change it to the grass and everything will be fixed for me. But the grass height is not really realistic, so you need to manage it and change it to some logical number. 4.1 can be interesting. And the height variation is 24.6 and press enter. Everything is fine for my grass, but I can reduce it to 2.2.
press enter. Okay, in this case, everything is fine. I have some dry soil in my project, which you can see it, but the displacement of the soil is too much. So for this reason, I'm going to click on the sample paint again, pick this soil in here, and I want to reduce the height map intensity, some number like 56.9, and I think now it's more smooth for my project. And we have this pavement. So I'm going to click on the sample paint, pick this pavement up, and the height map for it can be reduced. If I increase the height map, look at this stone in here. If I increase the height map, you can see more depths on the detail. So you need to reduce it to some number like 69.6 and press enter. As you can see, now it's much better. In here, everything is fine. This granite uh, flower box is okay. And this grass is fine for me. But if you want to reduce the height of it again, you can pick up the sample paint in SketchUp, select your texture. The texture will be detected for you in the Enscape Material Editor. And now if I increase the height, I can see the changes. Or if I reduce it, I can see the changes either. So 2% is enough. Height variation is zero because I need some clear cut grass for my project. I need to reduce a little bit greenness of this grass, so 94.6 is enough. I'm going to close it, click on the camera number one, and it will be selected for me like that. Even in the SketchUp, the sun setting will be affected by the Enscape rendering engine setup. So I'm going to click on the sample paint and finalize my last material. In here, we have some type of iron console for our project. I'm going to pick it up, click on the Enscape Material Editor. It will be detected for me. So uh, I'm going to reduce the roughness. Look at the iron in the Enscape environment. If I zoom on it, you can see more reflection. If you turn roughness to the zero, it will work like a mirror. So don't do this work because it will be oversaturated and not realistic. So 23.6 is enough. But it's the uh, metal, so I need to increase Metallica for better result. For example, 46.9 can be acceptable. And a specular, this element is different by the materials. You can find it out on the internet. For example, if you type specular for iron, specular for ceramic. In this case, I want to increase it. Totally specular helps you to make your environment more brighter with getting some help from the environmental lights on the surfaces. 59.4 is enough. I'm going to press enter. Material is over. So now I'm going to click on the camera number one. Everything is fine. And save my project. Control S. Don't forget it. I'm going to maximize the Enscape. First of all, I need to go exactly next to the safe frame on the projection and change it to the two-point perspective. It helps you to generate more realistic photo for your project. Then I need to orbit like that. Click on the Enscape Asset Library. And I want to select the uh, categories like the uh, vehicle. I need to add some car in here or some bike. It totally depends on you. For example, I'm going to search for some car which, we, which match with my environment much better. I think maybe maybe something like maybe this SLR can be good for this project. So I'm going to select it. And now you can see the icon of this project in here. It's the preview and interactive. So I'm going to click on it. Click on the selection on the asset library and click on the apply changes downside right. So I'm going to click on it. It will be fixed for me like that. So I'm going to select it again. I'm going to click on the scale option and you can see the gizmo on your project. I'm going to reduce the scale a little bit, not too much. In here, you can set it manually. For example, 91% is enough. Click on the colorizing. Go to the albedo. Albedo is the, I think, maybe Italian word. It's related to the color or texture. So uh, in here, I can manage the car's color. For example, 188, 188, I need some type of between white and gray color, 188, press enter, 
everything is fine, it will be changed for me. So now I'm going to click on the apply changes. If I click on it again, go to the uh, rotation, I can rotate it very simple and easy. For example, if I want front side of my car, like that, and apply changes. Something like this will be happen for you. Everything is fine, press F, camera number one, let's get and jump into it for the rendering setup. I'm going to click on the uh, visual setting in here, move it to the left side, move and skip to the right side, now I can manage my screen much better. I'm going to click on the uh, field of view, and you can see when I reduce the field of view, it will be zoom more on my project. I will zoom it something like that. It's about 60 degree. And if I turn off the auto exposure, you can set the exposure manually. But in this case, I prefer to use 56% for my project. As you can see, the part of the building is not available in our render. So what we can do, we can click on the F and click on this option here. And we can apply some changes for our project. How? We can increase the pitch option. It's 8. I'm going to double it. 16 and now it's much better if i increase it more and more it will be go upside but be careful about the downside of your project so 14.6 can be good and i'm going to click on the save option camera number one selected for me and now i'm going to click on the visual setting so i'm going to increase the depth of field and you can see what will happen in your project the environment will be get blur for you in this case, I'm going to turn off the autofocus and play with the focal point. Focal point helps you to manage this shiny line in Enscape. And I want to focus on this edge in here. This is the edge effect in the rendering. And it helps you to bold something in your architecture project. Or I can hold this shiny line on this car. It totally depends on you what you really want to show. This is the exterior rendering and this is the building. So... The building is more important. I'm going to hold shiny line in here, 12.8. It means that the distance between the focusing point and your camera is 12.8 meter. Now I can play with the depth of field. For example, something like that can be interesting. 19% is enough. Rendering quality on the high mode. If you have RTX graphic card, you can increase it and have some fun with it. Go to the image bar. I'm going to turn on the auto contrast to calculate highlight and shadows automatically. So we skip this part. Saturation control the colors tone. So I prefer to use 100 because it's logical. And color temperature. If you want warm render, you can reduce it. You can see the screen get warm. And if you want cold render, you can increase it. Six. 1000 Calvina is enough. Motion blur is the uh, camera shutter time. And if I increase it or decrease it, it will catch different type of lighting and elements in your rendering. I prefer to hold it on the 50%. Lens flare and bloom, I don't want to talk about them. So I'm going to reduce them like that. For example, 16 is enough. And, and Wignate. If you look at the project, when I increase it to the 100, the edge of our render will be get dark. So it helps you to generate some type of cinematic renders, but try to use it in some special renders. In this case, we don't need it. So hold it on some number like 36, I don't know. Chromatic aberration is zero. Go to the atmosphere bar. We have fog option in here. I'm going to turn it off. Right now, I don't need it. Sun brightness. Look at the environment. When I reduce the sun brightness, you can see what will happen. We will have some cloudy weather. So sun helps you to generate daylight and very, maybe, I don't know, sunny weather renders. I'm going to increase it to the 86 or 80 is enough. Night sky is not useful because we don't have night render. Shadow sharpness. Look at these edges of your shadow. If I increase the shadow sharpness, we will have very sharp shadows, very clear and very crispy lines, but try to manage it on some logical number. For example, maybe something like 76 can be wonderful. Artificial light brightness. 
We don't have any spotlight, so I don't want to talk about it. Ambient brightness. Again, we don't have any interior rendering. I don't want to talk about it. I'm going to turn off the wind option. Go to the skybox. All right. We have horizon line. You can see the background. It's empty. If I change it to the white cubes, you can see the city HDRI in the background. And when you play with the rotation, you can change the white cubes in here. White cubes place. But if you pay attention, when you use rotation, the sum power will be affected by them. So try to manage them. For example, 62 is enough. About the clouds and options. We have density. Look at the sky in the render at the right side. When I increase the density, absolutely the clouds will be increased. And when I decrease it, the sky will be clear. Variety is the type of diversity that clouds can be changed like that. And Cyrus amount. Cyrus amount is the small clouds which you can find in the sky. You can see this point in the render. If I turn it off, the sky is clear. If I turn it on, we have something like that. I prefer to use it because it's more realistic. In the real life, we can see these type of clouds in the sky. I'm going to increase the clouds a little bit to the 56 and variety is about 72%. Contrails is zero. Longitude and latitude is the X and Y position of the clouds. You can play with them like that, but I don't want to do this work. And the output is the resolution. Full HD is okay for me. Everything is fine and time for the rendering. This is my first view. I'm going to click on the F, create another view. This time I'm going to type camera 002. I don't have any visual presets, so I'm going to unlink it. I'm going to orbit like that, move like this, and something like that can be good for me. So the X is about 7.77, 7 7.77. I'm going to click on the Create, Edit, and again, I can play with it. For example, the Y is about 10. And this one is 0, 7.77. The Y is the eye height. I'm going to type 2. And the Z is about 13. I think it's okay. I'm going to click on the save. And we have camera number 1 and camera number 2. How we can render them double without any stop? You have one option in here, which name is screenshots. It helps you to create render only with one frame. But if you have multiple pictures, you can click on the uh, batch rendering. If I click on the batch rendering, I can select camera number one, camera number two, and click on the render images. It will ask you a question, I think. It will ask you a question like that, which wants you to select a folder. I'm going to go to the desktop. And I'm going to select desktop and select folder. And rendering will be a start for me. Okay. We will wait for it. It depends on your graphic card and your GPU power. And this is the final result that you can see in the background. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If this tutorial is useful for you, please like and subscribe our YouTube channel. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your valuable watching. And goodbye.